Now, when you listen to that video, what what is what was everybody saying about their smoke alarms? It wasn't working, which leads me to misconception number three. Because we, we know that time is what saves people, right? But misconception number three is that everybody thinks they're gonna be able to wake up because they have a life-saving device in the house. And what is that? They have these things, and I see them up, you know, if I'm in the house, I show point that out. You have this in your house. This here is what's called what? A smoke alarm. It's a smoke alarm, and this is supposed to be a life-saving device. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I mean, that's why they make them, supposedly, right? First of all, there are different types of smoke detectors. There are different types of vacuums. There are different types of solar, uh, uh, whatever, whatever product is out there, you have different types, right? Well, smoke alarms have different types. This one here so happened to be called the ionization alarm. The ionization, the ionization technology, okay? These types of alarms have one thing in common with a carton of milk, okay? You know what that is? It has an expiration date. When you put milk in the refrigerator and it expires, the milk is no good, right? It's still milk in the refrigerator, even if it's expired, it's still milk. Not good milk, but it's milk, right? Whatever you wanna call it, right? But it is milk in the refrigerator, but it's expired. If you was to go to use it and drink it or, you know, partake of that milk that is in there, it's not good, right? This alarm has an expiration date. If it's expired and it's sitting on your wall, right, or your ceiling, and it's expired, it's going to be like that spoiled milk. It's not going to be good when it's time to use it or drink it or, or, you know, or use it, right? Because and the reason why they have to put an expiration date on a smoke alarm like this, an ionization of smoke alarm, is because they get spoiled, but how do they get spoiled? First of all, when you buy these things, the battery is not in it yet, right? You have to put the battery in. When you put the battery in, what you do is you activate the, the ions. So in other words, battery, porn, smoke chamber, right? Now in that smoke chamber, as soon as you put that battery in, boom, it connects and it starts to activate the ions. That's why it's called an ionization alarm. So when they activate the ions, so imagine this, you have a smoke chamber, you activate it, boom, there's ions flowing. There's ions just flowing in the smoke chamber. And what is that smoke chamber waiting for? The smoke chamber is waiting for something to, to make it sound. You know what that is? Is people say smoke. Yes, smoke because there's particles in the smoke, but it's really the particles that come in the smoke. Well, have you ever had your alarm go off when you were cooking? Most people have experienced that simply because when you're cooking, it creates what we call white smoke. Now in the white smoke from when you're cooking, there's many, many small little particles. And in these small little particles, it goes in and interrupts the flow of the ions. So it stops it. And when it stops that flow of the ions, boom, the alarm goes off. Wow, it went off when we were cooking. You know what? These things go off more than when they're cook someone's cooking than it, than it does. goes off when it's supposed to go off when there's a real fire. So they should change these things to meal alarms or something or dinner time alarm or something because it goes off when people are cooking. Hey, breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time, that's the alarm, right? Because they do go off more when people are cooking than when it goes off when there's a real fire. Because what happens is when you have a real fire, the reason why it doesn't go off as easy or as quickly is because when you have a real fire in your house, when you're cooking, it's white smoke. When you have a real fire, what, what do you think is the color of the smoke? Black. Dark gray, black. Now, in that type of smoke, there's different sized particles. There's different size and there's not as many of them. So when the particles become much larger, larger in size and not as many of them, what happens, it doesn't block the flow of the ions in the ionization alarms. So when it doesn't block the flow of the ions, the alarm cannot sound. Because that's what sounds the alarm, is the block of the flow of the ions. Right. But the alarms don't block. The, the, the smoke chamber don't block because the particles are not enough. Right? That's why you heard the video. 30 minutes later, the video, the alarms are not going off. Yeah. You'll die by then. There's no way you survive. 30 minutes, let alone 30 seconds these days because everything burns so fast. Right? So, they, so what happens is when that, when, when, when that ions in time will start to get less and less and less. Before you know it, there is no ions. No ions in the smoke chamber, but you go to check it, oh, our alarms work. 
but there's no ions. So what good is an alarm that has a horn and a battery, but no ions? It's worthless. Why? It's because it cannot sound if nothing, the ions are not there to block so that it can sound the alarm. Right? In fact, I'm going to tell you, show you guys what they said. What these alarm companies do is they need to let people know in their owner's manual how it works, how it doesn't work, what makes it work, what, does, what makes it not work, whatever the case is, it has to have something in there in the owner's manual. Now, when you bought your alarm, what did you do with your, your, your manual? Put it away. Most people put it in a drawer, mm -hmm. throw it in the trash, whatever the case is. Now, this is an actual size. This comes in like this, okay? Wrapped around and there's a battery on the side and it's wrapped in packaging, right? You take out the alarm, you grab the battery, you put it in, you throw it away. But let me show you what you were throwing away. This is the actual size. You ever heard the, the saying, read the fine print? Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, the print was so fine I couldn't read it, <laughs> right? So what I did was I broke, I, I blow it up so I can actually let you hear or, or I'm gonna read to you what they're actually saying in this that you throw away. Okay? Now over here, I don't know where your husband went, but we have some video in here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what we have here, it says a warning. If I check this out. The actual size over here says warning. I'm in denial, that's why I'm gonna, I blew it up. I'm, I'm not doing these glasses there. My eyes are good, as long as it's big lettering. Okay? <laughs> so this is what it says here. Warning in bold letters. If they said warning in bold letters, what are they trying to tell you? Caution. Caution. Read this. Yeah, it's important. Caution. Now, they didn't want to hide nothing. The very first paragraph, because they knew people weren't going to read it anyway. So they put in the first paragraph. This is what they said. They said, according to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which is an agency of the U.S. government, these alarms may not go off or give early enough warning in as many as 35% of all fires. So what they have told you is, oh, by the way, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, when you bought these things, they're going to fail. There's a chance it's going to fail. So you know what? Just know that. Well, we don't know that. Yeah. We think it's going to work in every fire. That's right. right? Now, this is what else it said. It said over here, like all other electronic devices, listen to this now, smoke detectors have limitations. Smoke detectors may not sense every kind of fire every time. Mm. They cannot be expected to sense dangerous fires. Hello? <laughs> yeah, why are we buying them? Right? Yeah. Why are we buying them? You know why we buy them? Because number one, we have to, to pass inspection. And number two is what? Misperception. It's the cheapest. This is mm. ionization alarms or the number one selling alarm in the world. Usually you want to be proud, right, when you have a product that you're the best, you sell the most. You want to be proud, you know, like some vacuums that I know they sell a, a, a lot. That doesn't mean they're bad. No, I'm just kidding. Stuff. <laughs> you know what that does? It, you, what, what you're buying is a false sense of security. Yes, because when it goes off when you're cooking, and when it goes off when it's for real, then you don't believe yeah. it anymore, right? But this is what happens. This here is the number one selling alarm, not because they're the best, but it's because they're the what? The cheapest. cheapest. But why do people buy the cheapest? Misconception number one. Not gonna happen to us, so what do we do is we get the cheapest one because we need to pass inspection. That's the real reason. A contractor puts it in the house when they build a house because he's trying to meet his budget, he'll buy the cheapest protection for the family that bought the new house that he built. That's not fair for me, and it ain't fair, it shouldn't be fair for you. But this is what else they said, okay? But what they said was that it won't, the, the, the dangerous fire, what they're talking about, it's a hot fire. The hot gas grease electric fire, that fire there, you have no time, right? So they're saying that these things won't detect that. They're not designed to detect that. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. Over here, when they say first alert, but they mean ionization. First alert, first alert does not warrant or imply in any way that its smoke detectors will protect lives, hold on, and property in the event of a fire. They said it. Now I can handle it won't protect my property, but when they put lives in there, Wait a minute, I think, didn't we buy a life-saving device? That's what it's supposed to be. But they're saying it cannot protect lives, or they won't protect lives, don't depend on it. But do you know the real reason why they put this in here? It's because if something was to happen, you cannot sue them for millions of dollars because you lost a loved one because you bought a life-saving device that didn't work. They already told you that it won't work. 
But they said 35%. But let me show you what the study was done. What they said. They said it fails 55.8% of the time. They don't even give you half a chance of surviving a fire. You know what, when I was playing sports, right? When we were, when we were on the baseball team, right? We would flip a coin and maybe we got a 50% chance of getting the best guy on our team. They don't even give you a 50% chance of surviving a fire because it's gonna fail more than it succeeds or, 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 or works. It ain't fair, again, not fair for me. It ain't, shouldn't be fair for you, right? Now, where should we not put these things in the house? Listen, this is really crazy if you ask me. Where are they telling you not to put these things? Don't put them in your kitchen or near your kitchen. Wait, hold on, is it that a fire start? Don't put them in your garage. Well, don't we have our gas cans, our cars, our flammables, yes. right? Our furnace area, hot water heaters, isn't that what starts fires, you know? Uh, in our attic spaces, we have all of our electrical wiring. Don't put them in these places, by the way, Garrett, or Mr. and Mrs. Customer, right? Don't put them in these places. Well, hold on, that's where fires start. We need protection in these places. But the real reason is because, number one, this is not designed for hot, fast burning fires. They're a smoke detector. Remember the two things, <coughs> hot and cold? This is a cold fire alarm, okay? So they're telling us, in other words, no good. But if you want it to go off when you're cooking, let the kids know when it's dinner time, right? Now you know, if I came here and I gave you all this news about fire, people dying in fires, that wouldn't be good if I leave you with, with that, you know, saying that this don't work without a solution. Because if there is a problem, if there's a problem, there is a solution. Well, there was no solution prior to 1971. In 1971, I, I represent a company that the owner of a company called Ray Jones lost a loved one in his home, in that in his, you know, in a home that is a, was dear to him because this was in the house. It didn't sound. So he thought he's a, he's a very wealthy man. He owns 159, 169 oil wells in Texas. Very wealthy, wealthy man. But he lost a loved one, not because he didn't buy the, something, he had something, but he lost the loved one because of the wrong type of technology. So he vowed to, to his family that that will never ever happen again, right? So there's an alarm that we have that we can actually make sure that we, have, that we can protect your family. We have never lost a life since 1971. Of course, this is a new technology. When it first started, it was this round little bell that would detect heat. It would melt this little cover, this cap, and when it melts the cap, okay, so the cap is like this, right? As soon as this cap melts from the heat, boom, this thing will pop up and then the bell will start to ring like a school bell. And it will ring like a school bell to wake everybody up. Well, techno time has changed, technology has changed. First of all, we need to make sure the family has protection for two types of fires, hot and cold. First of all, we use lithium manganese battery. We don't have to worry about these nine volts. This lithium manganese battery that is in here is good for 20 years. It has been tested for 28 to 32 years, but we're just telling people it's a 20 year battery, okay? This uses Bluetooth wireless technology to notify the home, the family, that there's a fire happening someplace in the house that we don't know of. And I'm not sure how you would be able to know. We don't use ionization, we use optic. What is optic to you? Vision. Eyes, vision, right? Let me show you the eyes of this technology. You see straight ahead, the two eyes? Mm -hmm. Right, that's the eyes of this alarm, which is the optics. Every four seconds, the optic will take a look in here. So it shines and looks in here. When the optic shines and looks in here, right, what is it looking for? Smoke, right? If it doesn't see smoke, it goes to sleep. Four seconds later, bam, it wakes up and it goes and looks again. Now what person could you hire for every four seconds, wake up, go sleep, wake up, go sleep, right? Pretty messed up. Well, this will protect your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week for at least 20 years to make sure you and your family are safe in the event of a fire because it's gonna look every four seconds. Now when it looks, and there's smoke in here. I'm sorry, 1% smoke, it won't wake you up. But as soon as it hits 2% smoke, it'll sound the alarm and then it'll send a signal throughout the whole house that there's fire somewhere in the house. 
Now these alarms, 40%, 60%, 80%, sometimes the whole house is engulfed in flames and there is no sound from that alarm. We're talking about 2% smoke, very low density, which gives you more what? Time. Time, because it's what saves people? Time. Time, time is what saves people. So it's gonna give you so much time, jokingly, you can go make a cup of coffee <laughs> before you go deal with the fire. No, the real reason is it gives you so much time you can get the kids up, get the spouse up, get the grandkids up, get whoever's in the household to get them up so you have more time to get everyone out. Amen. Okay? So bottom line is this will read and protect you and your family every four seconds. That's how it reads the cold fire, which is the smoky fire. Amen. Now, right here, if you notice this, this is what we call a heat sensor. This heat sensor will detect heat using the technology called rate of rise. What is rate of rise? Rate of rise means if your temperature in your house is 80 degrees, it adjusts to the 80 degrees. As soon as the temperature goes up 20 degrees in a five to 10 second period at the most, as soon as it does that, that means the house is getting too hot too fast. It's gonna say, hey, no house should ever get that hot this, that fast and something's wrong in this house. Let me let the family know that there's fire in here. There's something hot happening in here. Boom, it sends a signal throughout the whole house and it'll sound the alarm. But this is what we call our combination heat and smoke protection, combination. Now, let me tell you something else. We are the only company in the country, or maybe even in the world, I know in the country, that have a standalone heat detection. Now, when you look at this, it looks the same from the front, but if you look at the side, because this one doesn't, this one doesn't have the smoky fire. Because where did the NFPA said, which is the National Fire Protection Agency said, don't put it where? In, in your kitchen. kitchen and all that stuff. But we need protection in these places. In those places you're gonna have hot fires. So this is a hot fire detection, okay? Heat only, rate of rise. Where would this go? All your, in your hot spots. Where is the hot spots? Every place they said not to put a smoke alarm mm -hmm. is a hot spot. Or the hot fires. In fact, I'm gonna show you how this works. I want you to, Hold this for me, I know, and, and I want you to put your thumb over that speaker on the left. Ah, yeah, that one, okay, because it's gonna be loud, so I'll just cover it. If you wanna really hear the sound of it, you can actually lift up your thumb so you can see how, how loud it is. And what I do sometimes, I send the, the husband or the wife, I have them go in the bedroom. I said, I want you to stay there, right? And when it sounds, I want you to, and I'll tell them what to do, so that they can actually experience it being in their bedroom. But let me show you here how this will work. So right now, you're sleeping. 2.30 in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, right? This here is waking up every four seconds. And this is what's gonna happen. When, I, when this alarm goes off, it's gonna send a signal, you're gonna see that one go off. When you see the red flame, that means on the far, on the far right, on the top, don't press it. But yeah, you're gonna see that flame, that means when you're sleeping, all you gotta do is look up and you're gonna see that red flame, that means there's fire somewhere in your house, okay? When you wake up, you gotta make sure everyone is awake and then I'm gonna ask you to silence that, that, that alarm by pressing the white button, not just yet. And then what it'll do, it'll silence the whole network, and then this one will keep going on because this is where the danger is. So right now you're sleeping 2.30 in the morning, right? You're dreaming, right? A good dream, that all of a sudden there's a fire in your house, right? So it goes, and it sends a signal, hey, there's fire somewhere in your house. Now you wake up, you don't turn it off yet. You make sure your wife is up. You make sure everybody's up. Everybody get up, get up, get up, get out, right? But you wanna know where the fire is. You press that button. So it silences. But this one is still going. Why? It's because we need to know where this fire is. It could be in the attic, it could be in the basement, it could be in the garage. Laundry room. But there's a fire, it could be in the laundry room, it could be somewhere else, right? And the way to silence this one is it has to be free or clear from smoke, okay? That's how it detects the cold fire, but let me show you how it detects the hot fire. Remember that dangerous fire? Smoky fires, if you're awake, I mean, if you're sleeping and your alarm goes off, you have time because it's not flamey, it's not a lot of danger. I mean, there's always dangerous, but not like a hot, fast burning fire. I brought a hair dryer with me. The reason why I brought a hair dryer with me is because what kind of air comes out of a hair dryer? Hot. Hot air, right? Now, I promise you guys, I allow, and Tony, the hot air is coming from this, not from me, okay? Because I'm not full of hot air, all right? So I want you to, to hold that device, okay? And I want you to hold that again, I love. 
And I'm gonna show you how quickly this thing will detect heat. So you're sleeping at 2.30 in the morning and you got a gas, grease, or electric fire that breaks out in your kitchen, right? And I'm gonna show you how fast. I'm gonna go 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, right? I'm gonna show you how many seconds. I want you to listen to when it actually sounds, how many seconds it'll take. Okay? 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. How many seconds was that? Five. Five seconds, boom, there's a fire. When do you wanna know about the fire? When it starts, right, boom. Now there's a fire, so you wake up, everybody's up and awake, press that. The button. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's yeah. silence. But then this one is still going. The fire is somewhere in the hot spot. The only way this will silence is number one, the temperature goes down to the normal temperature, or number two, you press it. Now how many seconds was that? Five, That's pretty early to learn about a fire, right? Yeah. Now right now, I allow, and Tony, you guys have this in your house. The exact same thing that you have in your house. That was five seconds. I get one that's not okay. You have a hot fire, it's 2 30 in the morning. You have a hot fire right now, tonight, when you guys go to sleep, right? Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four, thousand five, thousand six, thousand seven, eight, nine, twenty, a hundred, two hundred, five hundred, a thousand, two years, five years. No sound of a fire. Feel that. You and your family will not survive with this in your house. And I, I'm saying that because I need to tell you that. You won't survive if you have a hot, fast gas, grease, or electric fire. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. You won't survive the fire if you depend on this for you and your family to survive a fire. Why are these people not surviving fires? Because they don't have enough. <coughs> the one in Marco Polo, he did wake up, but he woke up when it was too late. He couldn't get out. The, the couple in Pacific Palace, I'm just telling you the recent one, there's many, many fires. The recent one that the young, the, well not young, but they're in their 60s, retired couple, I mean, they're, they're young, uh, retired couple, died in their home fire at 2.30 in the morning fire. So they didn't make it because they didn't have time. Maybe they didn't even know about a warning. Maybe they had no warning, but they didn't survive. Every person that dies in a home fire generally is because they didn't know about it when it started. Because if every person knew about the fire when it starts, though everyone can survive. Unless you had bars on the windows and you know whatever, like that young girl. But if you have time, you can survive a fire. We don't want it to happen. I hope it never happens to you and your family, right? But we need to make sure in the event of it happen, happening, your, your family's protected. I know you don't plan on getting a car accident because hmm. you got car insurance, but you know the real reason why you got car insurance? It's because you have to. Let me ask you a question. If you didn't have to get car insurance, or if people didn't have to get car insurance, do you think everyone would get car insurance? No, because they don't think it's gonna happen to them. They're good drivers. Hey, I drive slow, right? I, I don't go on my cell phone or whatever the case is. We think we're safe, but it's there for protection. So my question to you, <coughs> you already have this in your house, <coughs> or you have a choice, chance to get this in your house. And if you have a fire tonight at 2.30 in the morning, which one would you depend on to make sure you and your family survive and wake up? <coughs> So my question to you is, do you want protection for you and your family? That's a silly question, but that's a question. Boom, yes. Well, the only way I can show you the proper protection for you and your family is I need to do an evaluation, because my evaluation would consist of this. I'm gonna protect you as a fire safety advisor in a fire safety company. I'm gonna protect you from front to back, side to side, top and bottom. We're gonna make sure that your home is totally protected so if a fire happens over there, a fire happens over there, a fire happens over there, you're protected in every part of your house. That's what we call full protection. Now, if you want anything less than full protection, you're gonna tell Garrett, tell me, hey, okay, Garrett, take this one out, take this one out, take this one out. That'll be your choice, but I need, as a professional, 
Safety advisor, I need to show you where you need the pro protection to make sure you're properly protected. So let's do an evaluation of your home. Okay, boom, and then that's when I do an evaluation. And that concludes the demo part. Well, <coughs> 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 <coughs>